Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel where we talk about skincare, grooming, and sometimes hair, so that sounds like your thing. Make sure you are subscribed. Also, come and follow me on Instagram where I post a lot of stuff you're not gonna see here on YouTube. I do have other t-shirts. I just realized I've worn this one for like the last like three videos. It's just really comfy, you know? <laughs> Ta-da! This is my 1 million subscriber plaque, which I never thought I was gonna get. So just a really quick thank you to everyone that subscribed, um, especially everybody that watches every single video. It means a lot. And I have got something planned. I will be talking about it in a lot more detail. I've got a giveaway coming up um, that I will hopefully be filming next week just to say thank you. So um, yes, thank you so, so much, honestly. But we'll, we'll do this in another video. <laughs> one thing I do want to do now I've hit a million subscribers, especially, and one thing I enjoy doing is sharing other creators YouTube channels and socials in particular the more educational content that's out there from um, experts within the industry so licensed experts scientists all that kind of stuff I think one thing we have to remember that the majority of skincare youtubers beauty gurus are simply consumers and skincare enthusiasts with a hobby that kind of accidentally became a full-time job in my case anyway and over the two years of making a specifically skincare content I kind of started as a full men channel which I really didn't like. So over the two years I consider when I really really started to dedicate my life to my channel I've learned so much from these experts online and my content has come so far my opinion on skincare has come so far as well. But today in particular I'd like to share some videos from uh, skincare experts again that scientists, licensed dermatologists, aestheticians etc etc. I want to share their videos that have shocked me this week taught me something I didn't know or further explained something that I needed explaining. I will be making this a monthly thing I share experts anyway but I do want to dedicate a, a monthly video because there's just a whole other world of skincare influencers out there that you need to discover. So with all these videos I will be linking their socials down below. Check them all out, all their socials, check them out. So let's start with dermatologist Dr. Angelo Landrasina aka Derm Daddy over on Twitter. He is a dermatologist of course, he also is on, not just on Twitter, he has a YouTube channel, um, Instagram and TikTok. His TikToks are entertaining. It's the kind of way I like to learn is entertaining, bite-sized, to the point. You learn so much in 15 to 30 seconds from his videos, so I highly, highly recommend that you check him out. So this, this is a video that, you know, actually we'll, we'll discuss it after, we'll watch the video first. It's more unsolicited skincare advice with me, a dermatologist. I'm about to blow your mind. You're probably showering wrong. If you're suffering with a dry and itchy skin, it may very well be due to your bathing habits. Most people take really stripping showers, and that's really unfortunate, especially in the winter months when your skin is prone to drying out already. Uh, first, you don't need to be putting soap all over your body. The only areas that really need soap are your underarms, groin area, and backside. The rest of your body just needs water. If you were rolling in the mud or something, like, I don't know what you're into, that's a different story. You'll also want to keep your showers short, lukewarm, and only once a day. Follow these rules and your skin will be moist and gorgeous. We all want moist skin. <laughs> So this actually kicked up a real fuss. I saw a lot of, lot of people being like, no, I'm not dirty, I'm gonna clean all over. Which I get because I, for one, wash everywhere. Like, I, I just like the smell of my body washes, you know? But I also, in the colder months, get very dry, itchy front legs. What they called shins, very dry, itchy shins. And as I said, this kicked up a fuss because people were like, no, I don't wanna be dirty. But what's the first thing we do when our skin barrier is compromised, when our skin feels dry on our face, when it feels dehydrated? We stop cleansing our face in the morning. We cleanse once a day. We skip our morning cleanse or we just splash our face with water. So why is our skin so different? Like Dr. Angelo Langesina said, scrub the bits that get sweaty. Like I would do on my face, I wash the bits that get oily. I really concentrate, you know, on my T-zone. But in the morning, when I've woken up and not done anything and my skin is feeling dry or itchy or flaky like the front of my legs, the last thing I'm gonna do is use hot water on it, lather something up on it. So this makes perfect, perfect sense to me. I'm gonna start showering and not wash anything but those crevices, the creases, and my itchy legs will be gone soon. I'll keep you updated. I know you're really excited about that. <laughs> Next up, we have dermatologist Dr. Shah. If you're on TikTok, you know him already. Like he, he's, he's big in the world of TikTok. 
However, he also has a YouTube channel where he goes into depth a bit more about um, skincare, really good Q&As on there as well. So I want to share this video of his investigation into St. Ives Apricot Scrub. We all know it has a bad name, we all know the idea of why it's got a bad name, but do we really know how this all started up? I feel like the controversy really picked up traction in 2018, there was that whole court case. It got thrown out of court, but it gave St. Ives apricot scrub a really bad reputation. It's a shit product in my opinion, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> so the lawsuit against St. Ives apricot scrub was that the crushed apricot powder, the lawsuit actually said walnut powder. Is there walnut powder in it? Maybe it's a mixture. Um, it creates microscopic tears in the skin and that the product was not actually non-comedogenic and also not dermatologist tested. But yeah, this was thrown out of court basically because they couldn't prove any of this. And the fact that the dermatologist tested it doesn't hold any promises. All it tells you is that a dermatologist tested the product. It doesn't tell you whether they liked it or not was the premises of that. So if there's no proof about any of this, why do we hate it so much? Let's watch this video. St. Ives Walnut Scrub, a Dr. Shaw original investigation. In a recent New York Times article, the company claimed that the walnut shells are actually well polished and that the negativity online is way overblown. I decided to go to Walgreens to pick up a bottle because you all know that I'm banned from filming at CVS. I put a drop on a slide and I decided to check it out. Make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos like this. Fun fact, dermatologists use microscopes all the time. As you can see here, the particles are all different sizes and shapes, which is going to lead to an uneven exfoliation of the skin. Some of them are pointed and sharp like this one here, and others are large and irregular like this one here. Nice try, St. Ives, but do better next time. Pointy sharp bits and uneven exfoliation does not sound like a product I personally want to use. I do have experience with St. Ives apricot scrub. It was something I used religiously as a teenager and I just remember it being painful, but I was thinking, you know, I'm scrubbing hard at my skin, it's working. And I remember it really drying out my skin as well. Again, this isn't a point of saying that like all physical scrubs are bad. No, it's just when the scrubs are like this, that they're horrible. <laughs> Potato science, research science. <laughs> Remember a few videos ago when we were looking at some TikTok skincare hacks and routines, a lady sellotaped a potato to her face. And I was like, can we do some investigation into potatoes? Important potato research. And it turns out that other than cooling your skin, there may not be any benefits at all. In fact, it might actually be bad for your skin. So I want to introduce you to Dr. Azzy as she goes by on YouTube, but she's also on TikTok where I found these videos. So again, I'll be linking all this down below. But yes, she is a dermatologist and she sheds some light on the potential negative side effects of taping a potato to your face, which now sounds really, really ridiculous, but let's watch this video. What's the deal about taping a potato to your pimple? There's no science that shows this works. In fact, they have glycoproteins that some people are allergic to. You're better off using a zit roller or getting a pimple shot from your dermatologist that makes it go away in a day. There we go. So not only do potatoes potentially not do anything other than cool your skin, but they can actually cause an allergic reaction. I forgot to mention this last time, but when I peel potatoes, my hands itch. So not only is it the worst job to do when it comes to cooking, but it also irritates my skin so, so much. So it could be this cloak a cloak, -cloak, -cloak things. Also, Dr. Shah agrees. <laughs> Lab Muffin Beauty Science. You should all be familiar with her by now because she is my go-to for unbiased, purely factual information led by very, very thorough research. She's a scientist, chemistry PhD, who creates those very factual videos, blogs, and whilst her, oh, and really good Instagram posts as well. And while she takes quite a deep dive into the science behind any skincare topic really, it's still easily digestible and easy to understand, especially her videos. She busts a lot of myths um, when it comes to skincare trends, fear mongering within the skincare um, world. And if you are not subscribed to her channel, please go watch her channel and subscribe. Do that now. So last week I gua shard and rolled my face, rolled my face? Yeah, I guess, using Sarah Chung's new products. A lot of people in the comments were saying that we forgot to mention that it produces collagen. Well, boosted collagen production, which is something neither myself or Sarah Chung claimed, and I think for a good reason. Michelle actually breaks down for us why this might not necessarily be the case. This is an Instagram reel, so it's not TikTok, but you know, 
they're trying. J rollers and gua sha tools probably aren't going to increase your collagen. Massaging your skin can increase circulation and increasing circulation could increase collagen production. But that doesn't mean you can say that massaging your skin will increase collagen production without extra evidence. It's like saying that because junk food has a lot of energy in it and energy makes you run faster, eating a lot of junk food will make you a really good athlete. Just because something could potentially work doesn't mean that it'll actually work in real life. You see this a lot in skincare in general that a lot of brands will use the word um, helps, helps to, or aids in the process of, and it doesn't really mean anything, you know? It's that really sneaky language that brands can use um, in general. Obviously not Sarah Chung's brand, they don't claim this. But yes, if you're not subscribed to Michelle from Lab Muffin Beauty Science, please go and follow her on everywhere. And everyone I've talked about today, everything, description box, yeah, description box down below. Again, thank you so, so much for 1 million subscribers. It's just, it doesn't seem, like it's happened because <laughs> like I don't know it still feels like a really distant goal that I'm never gonna reach even though I've reached it it's a very odd feeling but I'm very very grateful and we will be celebrating next week and I'll be thanking you with a giveaway but that is it from me now I will see you next time